Hello, welcome to VMC. I'm Dr. M. Dog upper respiratory illnesses may be on the rise at the moment. Join me as we discuss symptoms, prevention, treatments, and what you should be doing to best protect your dogs. The media has been covering some cases of some dogs like Thunder who have unfortunately ended up dying because of an upper respiratory disease. We know that there have been hundreds of cases and there seem to be at least five states in the US that seem to be more affected at this point. That being said, I've also now started reading reports in Eastern Canada. There is a lot that we currently don't know about this illness. Experts are scrambling to try to get more information for us. I started hearing smatterings about cases of a, an upper respiratory issue in dogs during the summer, but it seems like as the fall has come that case numbers in some areas have gone up. Most cases start out by looking a lot like what we tend to colloquially call kennel cough. Most dogs will start by having a cough. They may also have a fever, lethargy, lack of appetite, nasal discharge, ocular discharge, sneezing, and difficulty breathing. Patients will tend to be grouped into one of three categories. Some will have a chronic mild to moderate upper respiratory disease. It could involve a lot of inflammation in the trachea. And those dogs will end up having a prolonged cough for even up to a couple of months. There are other dogs that will start with the cough and then over time develop a pneumonia. These dogs are also minimally responsive to antibiotics. Third is the group that is the most worrisome and these are the dogs that get incredibly sick incredibly fast. These cases tend to have the worst outcomes. Epidemiologists working with the ODA have been trying to figure out what's causing this. They are reporting that it's most likely a viral etiology, which would explain why it's not responsive to antibiotics. Unfortunately, the common PCR panel that we will run for dogs that have an upper respiratory illness are mostly coming back negative, meaning this doesn't seem to be one of the most common viruses that causes upper respiratory illness in our dogs. A handful of cases are testing positive for mycoplasma. However, the ODA is saying at this time, they do not believe that that is the causative agent for this outbreak. Something that I do want to put in here is a bit of a note of caution. This is because in veterinary medicine, having upper respiratory infectious diseases circulating in the canine population is not something that's new. And at this point, we just don't know enough to know if this outbreak fits into kind of the normal patterns or if this is something that warrants an awful lot of concern. Something else that I've been thinking about and was unable to find an answer for is whether or not these dogs have been tested for something like SARS-CoV-2. We also know that this SARS-CoV-2 virus can infect dogs and it can spread from dog to dog. We have some research demonstrating this. The reason why I think of SARS-CoV-2 is because in people we have a lot of research demonstrating that this virus can negatively impact the immune system. So I've also been wondering, is it possible that these dogs have had COVID in the past, now they have a compromised immune system and or some previous damage to their respiratory system, and so that's making them more predisposed to whatever virus is currently spreading around. This is just some musings on my behalf, and if anybody is aware of more research that I missed, please comment it down below and let me know. I'd love to hear from you. This is also a topic that's constantly evolving. And so from when I have done the research and film this to when this goes live, we might already have some changes in the information available. Editing Dr. M here. In the time between when I filmed and editing, Trupanion put out some information about the numbers of respiratory cases that they are seeing. They didn't have any additional information about what the cause of this increase in claims could be, but interesting to see this data that there does seem to be an increase that's been occurring.
it's possible that this outbreak still falls within the realm of normal. However, at this point, we're having media attention, which is going to drive more awareness of the issue. Let's cover what you need to do if you note that your dog starts feeling off. First step is you need to contact your veterinarian in order to have your dog evaluated. They will probably recommend PCR testing to rule out the common viruses and bacteria that cause infectious respiratory disease in our dogs. They may also start some medications to reduce coughing or to help reduce fevers and so on and to help your dog deal with their symptoms. You also must isolate them away from all other dogs for at least a month. Dogs that have been exposed to a dog that has symptoms need to be isolated for two weeks. If your dog ended up becoming symptomatic after being at a boarding facility or grooming place or dog show, whatever it may be, you also should be contacting the facility to let them know. If you are in an area with an outbreak, there are a few things that you need to be doing. You should make sure to avoid communal water bowls. You should also not be taking your dog to places where other dogs congregate. This means dog parks, boarding kennels, dog shows, and the like. It may also be appropriate to talk with the groomer if that you see if your dog requires regular grooming to discuss if it's possible to increase the time between grooming appointments. Of course, matting is painful and we need to avoid that as well. Overall, what you're looking to do is reduce the contact your dog has with unknown dogs. Just like with humans spreading upper respiratory viruses, the more contact your dog has with other dogs, the more risk you are exposing them to. And everyone, even if you are not in a current outbreak area, you should contact your veterinary clinic to make sure that your dog is up to date with all of their respiratory disease vaccines. This means most often parainfluenza and Bordetella. It can also mean canine influenza. I'll make sure to do an update video if and when we end up learning more about this topic, but it was requested by a few of you, so I wanted to make sure that I covered what we do currently know. We just don't quite have enough information for me to be able to give you a bunch of firm recommendations at this point. Depending on where you are geographically located, this may or may not currently apply to you. Talking with your local vet clinic about if cases are being noted is a good idea. That can help you to judge how you should be modifying your behavior at this point and just keep an ear out for if cases do start popping up in your area. I hope that you have found all of this information helpful. I do love interacting with you in the comments. If you ever have a topic you'd like me to cover in the future, please comment it down below. I'm happy to add it to my list. And I do put out a new video most Fridays, so I look forward to seeing you in the next one, and I hope your weekend is a good one. We'll talk to you soon. <laughs> Bye! I hope that my dog eating her food puzzle and sleeping hasn't been too disruptive to the audio in this video. I'm just on a bit of a time crunch and I have now to record this or never, so I went for it. <laughs>